Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nelly. So today I'm going to start on a series of videos discussing a new concept uh, which are all related to gases and the properties of gases and theories that are related to gases. Okay, this is chapter 5 in the Zumdahl book and I'm going to start by just talking about why um, we want to study gases. So this video is really an introduction on this topic in general. Okay, just as I've uh, done for all the other topics as well. So as you know, in um, at the beginning of the semester, we talked about the various states of matter that um, any sample can have. And you know that you can change the physical states from a solid to a liquid to a gas. And we didn't really talk about this state called a plasma state, which is basically ionized gases. But we usually, in the general chemistry level, will only talk about these three states. So, as you can see from this, this, this drawing, which shows kind of the molecular or the atomic arrangement of the different physical states, you can see that with gases, uh, the atoms or the molecules or the particles in this case tend to be a bit further apart from each other uh, in the way they're being envisioned. Okay? And that uh, basically is what leads us to want to study gases specifically uh, from the other topics. And the reason is outlined here. When you have a particle in the gas state, we consider them to have no intermolecular interactions with other uh, particles around them. Okay, And that makes it interesting because it makes it possible to study the particle on its own and what it would you know, what kind of properties you would have of just that individual particle, just that one single particle, okay? And what's useful about studying the particles on its own is because once we understand the atomic and micros macroscopic properties of the particles on its own, we can then try to use those uh, properties that we study to explain the behavior of these particles when they are combined with other particles, for example, in mixtures, uh, in molecules, and so on. Okay. The other thing, of course, is if you just have to study one single particle or one individual particle as opposed to a particle that's making interaction with other particles, it's relatively simpler. And as a result, gases is really an ideal system for us to show how microscopic properties like as we'll see uh, as you'll see at the end of this chapter things like molecular speed things like average kinetic energy how those properties can be related to macroscopic properties things that we can measure such as pressure volume temperature and so on uh, there's also a very practical reason to study gases gases have many applications obviously we need oxygen to live so understanding how uh, gases work is quite important in this case to life. Uh, a lot of energy usage, heating and so on, cooking requires the uh, natural gas which is methane. Uh, we of course um, you know uh, now are en encountering this issue of global warming where temperature of the earth rises and a lot of it has been attributed to the rise in the concentration of these two gases, uh, carbon dioxide and methane, both as a result of industrial production. And pollution, um, in, uh, for example, we live in Los Angeles, it's, it's, you know, very much we had issues with pollution, we still have issues with pollution because there's so many cars here, and these gases are being produced uh, from various types of uh, combustion, and that tends to pollute the environment. Obviously, if we care about those types of issues, we need to understand how these gases work. So, some of the gases you want to kind of keep in mind, you know, is, is, is the listed here, okay? So, in terms of elements, all of these are elemental gases. And we talked about them before. I mentioned this before in the... Um, lecture on the periodic table and you know the elements that uh, are found naturally as diatomic particles but here they are listed again hydrogen nitrogen oxygen O3 is a unique molecule called ozone and you'll see this uh, again later on uh, when we talk about Lewis structures but it's something you want to uh, keep in mind because it's actually quite an important gas it's found in the outer atmosphere 
it protects us against the radiation from the sun and other uh, other types of radiation ozone is actually not um, you know it's harmful to humans if it's found near the uh, surface of the earth but it's something that we usually generally find at the uh, pretty far out there in the atmosphere we have fluorine and chlorine gases all the noble gases that we talked about when we talk about the periodic table they're all again gases by the name and they tend to be relatively inert so there's some noble gases helium neon and argon they're completely inert in other words they don't react at all and form compounds there are other noble gases krypton xenon and radon which are less inert in other words they can actually form compounds um, and you know not as many as some other uh, elements but they do form compounds with other elements and we'll talk about them more when we get to again later chapter in the semester now there's also compounds that form gases quite a few of them these are just some some examples hydrogen fluoride hydrogen chloride both of them are gases uh, in nature if you dissolve them in water of course they become acids uh, carbon monoxide important type of gas that's harmful to human it's produced by incomplete combustion in your home um, if you have gas burners or if you have uh, a car that's left on uh, as well that's not going to be you know you're going to produce carbon monoxide and carbon monoxide is toxic to humans carbon dioxide of course I mentioned just now as uh, one of the what so-called greenhouse gas which basically means that it traps heat and doesn't allow heat to escape from earth to the um, uh, out, up, up to the uh, uh, outer space and as a result it warms up uh, the earth um, and that causes all kinds of issues uh, methane is a natural gas again that we use quite often and there's all these other gases as well that you wanna just keep in mind that they tend to exist as as gases so there's some important properties of gases that you also wanna keep in mind as far as you know how they'll behave if you put a gas in a in a container it would just completely fill up the container uh, as you know, if I were to take uh, a gas and um, you know put it in a balloon, for example, it will completely fill up the balloon uh, and keep pushing and it keep expanding the balloon. Okay, uh, it's very compressible. Again, in the example of a balloon, if I take a balloon, I can easily uh, press on the balloon and the balloon will change shape uh, as I'm as I keep pressing them. Okay, this is not necessarily true uh, with solids, obviously, or with liquids. Now, if you have a gas and you put another gas uh, in, uh, you know, mix with that, uh, uh, put in, in the same container with the first gas, these two gases will mix very easily, which is different than behavior of things like solids, where if you put two solids together, obviously they're not going to mix. If you put two liquids together, sometimes they mix, sometimes they don't. But gases will always mix. A good example is air that has you know it's basically a mixture of all kinds of gases you have oxygen you have nitrogen and and other gases as well also generally speaking gases are much you know have much lower densities than lost solids or liquids in fact the units of density of gases tend to be expressed in grams per liter versus solids or liquids where it's usually expressed as grams per milliliters or cubic centimeter okay so the last uh, slide will just kind of give you an overview of what we'll talk about in this chapter as we go through the series of videos. I'm going to start in the next video talking about just this uh, quantity called pressure which is very unique uh, to gas. It's, it's kind of a, a unique property of gas that's very readily apparent and we want to talk about just what pressure is, how to measure it, what units are uh, you know are being used to express pressure and then we'll go, we'll go from there to talk about several experimental results um, that gives our rise to some fairly simple laws of gases that relate certain properties of gases. We'll of course talk about the ideal gas equation which relates these properties that are expressed in the simple gas laws. We'll talk about gas density which really can be um, derived from the ideal gas equation the, uh, and then we'll talk about something called Dalton's law of partial pressures uh, when you have a mixture of gases do um, a number of stoichiometry problems related to gases and then the other half of the uh, chapter really will spend some time discussing what is the theory underlying gases how can we explain the property of gases 
uh, what is the image that we have about gases that helps us explain their be behavior, their properties. We'll talk a little bit about effusion and diffusion of gases and lastly we'll talk about something called real gases which is basically gases under certain types of pressure and temperature condition.